Hello and welcome to part two of this video tutorial series. My name is Johnny and if you joined us in part one I left you by saying we're going to be taking a look at roads. Uh, what we're looking at here is actually the new Villas Geo that came with the COD2 version of the tools and the reason I'm showing you this is because 90% or about 80% of this map is actually roads. Uh, we can see here they've gone into quite a lot of detail and I'm hopefully going to be taking you through the processes of how they made this kind of map but before we get to that we need to go through some of the basic processes we need to know to be able to manipulate our patches to be able to get to this kind of level. In the beginning part of this tutorial I took you through how to create a very basic terrain patch. Now we're going to expand on that and take a look at a few new processes processes including some basic blending so let's get on with that so we should be familiar with this site this is our basic terrain patch and this is where I left you in part one we're going to expand on that now and take a look at a couple of the more vital processes we need to know before we can even attempt to move on the first thing we need to know is how to make our verts accessible for manual selection and manipulation and to do that we simply need to have our patch selected and then press V on our keyboard as you can see, that's just opened up a whole bunch of multicolored dots. These are our individual vertices that are available on this patch. We can now go ahead and manually select and manipulate each of these individual by groups or by columns of vertices. Let's take a look at that. If we wish to select an individual vertice ready for manipulation, all we need to do is press and hold the left mouse button and drag. As you can see, there's a little selection box opening up as I do that, and any vert within that box will become selected. If I just let go, bang, that vert is now ready for manipulation. To deselect, simply left click or press escape. Bang, done. We can do that same process to select groups of verts, we can even do the same process to select the entire patch if we wanted to. The next way to select vertices is by pressing and holding control and we can select individual vertices anywhere we like on this patch without deselecting our original one. This is going to be really handy for example if you grab all of these here and you think oh no I wanted to grab this one as well you don't need to deselect simply press and hold control and then select away you can also deselect by just dragging over any already selected verts doing it this way and all of the other verts will remain selected that's pretty handy we can also select via columns and to do that simply press and hold shift and left click on any vert and as you can see that entire column or this vertical column has been selected if we want to select this column for example press and hold shift still and left click again and you can see how that every time I press the left mouse button that shifts over to column to column to column that's how we can select vertical and horizontal columns Next, we're going to take a look at how to add and remove vertices columns from within our patch. And to add, all we need to do is drag out and select any two vertices within our patch. To add, press Control, Shift and A all together. Bang, there you go, there's a new column for you. To remove it, press and hold Shift to select that particular column you want to remove. And again, Control, Shift, but this time Q. Bang, it's gone. So to add, drag out and select two vertices, Control Shift A. To remove, Control Shift Q. Now we're going to look at how we can split our patch. Say, for example, we wanted to split it straight down the middle. I'm going to select this column and press Control Shift X. It doesn't look like anything's happened, but if I deselect, you can now see that that has been turned into two completely separate patches. I'm now going to show you how to merge two patches together to make them one. We just split our patch and if we want to merge them back together again, I'm going to select both halves and press W. Deselect just to ensure that's happened and now we've returned to a single patch. There's a couple of golden rules we need to follow when we want to merge the patches and first is they have to be equal length along their touching edges and they must also be equal in the density of vertices. This is going to be handy later on when we come to do our more advanced texture work, uh, but that's how you can merge a patch back together. We're now going to look at a very simple vert weld. Eventually, when you're doing your mapping, 
on working with your terrain, you'll come to a situation where you need to close a gap between two separate patches. This is exactly what we've got here. There is one simple rule that you need to think about when doing your welding, and that is, depending on which patch you select first, this will become our destination patch. And when we do our welding, the verts on this patch will shift over to this location. That's going to be important as we go further along in these tutorials. So I want the verts from this patch to shift over here. So I'm going to select this one first. Next, bring up your verts by pressing V. To do the weld, simply drag out and select the two closest vertices and press W. We can do that all the way down the patch. And as you can see, the verts are shifting over to our original or destination patch because we selected that one first. That is a very simple vert weld. There's a couple of other ways to do it, but that's all I'm going to show you for now. So now we know how to do all that. I'm just going to take you through how to manually displace these vertices. Displace, by the way, is just a fancy name for move. Um, first of all, let's drag out and select this individual vert, and I'm going to press and hold Alt. I'm going to press and hold my left mouse button, and I'm simply going to drag my mouse around. And you can see how that vertice is moving. We could do that with however many verts we happen to have selected. If I shift down into my front view using Control Tab, pressing Hold Alt, left mouse button, we could drag them up and down as like so. We can also do the same in the 3D window, just again pressing Holding Alt and left mouse button, and we can drag them around. That's a couple of basic ways in which we can manipulate or displace our vertices. We could do that by column. If I press and hold shift to select a column, again, press and hold alt, left click, and we can drag that up and down, left to right, do whatever we want with it. Same across the other column. So that's how we can access and select and manipulate our vertices manually. The next way I'm going to show you is by using a tool. This tool is called the Advanced Editing Options Tool. And to access it, we simply need to press Y on our keyboard. There it is there. We've got several options to go through. It can be quite confusing to start off with, but I'm going to guide you through it now. and just give you a very basic idea of how to actually use this tool. By default, it's actually on disabled down here. So the first thing we need to do is enable it. And to do that, we just need to simply select one of these options. I'm just going to click on paint height to start with. Uh, when you're using this tool, it's pretty much exclusively for the 3D window. And as I've just moved over here, you can see that all of a sudden we've got these two rings, an inner and an outer radius. Uh, this is the actual tool itself. And any vertice within these radiuses will be affected by whichever manipulation we happen to want to do. Uh, we can change the size of these radiuses by coming back over to our toolbar and as you can see we've got slider bars here. The first two are for our inner and outer radius and to make our radiuses bigger we pretty obviously just slide the bar up and give it a greater value. We could do that for both of them. If I just come back to our patch, you can see that's absolutely huge now, way too big for working on this patch. So it's good for working in larger areas, but we will need to make this smaller so we can keep it more focused. And again, we just slide these up and down. And there we go. We've got a more manageable radius now. The one thing you have to keep in mind when changing the radius size is we always have to keep the outer radius at a greater value than the inner radius. And if I just make the inner radius bigger, you can see there it's bigger than the outer radius and our tool completely disappears. So the golden rule is keep the inner radius at a lower value than the outer radius. The third slider bar here is for amplitude, and I'll show you what that does in just a minute. So now we know how to do that, we need to know how to use the actual tool itself. And uh, if we come back over here, we've got paint height selected at the moment. And when we want to use any of these options here, we have to ensure that we have height selected down here. So ensure that's selected. I'm going to start with paint height. Come back over to our patch. And to use this tool, we simply need to press and hold Alt on the keyboard. And then as we move around this patch, we need to click our left mouse. And you can see there, we're raising the height of these vertices. That's if we use the left mouse button. If we use the right mouse button, we can lower the height of these vertices. And as you can see, as I'm moving around there and, and manipulating those vertices, they're moving pretty aggressively. This is where this slider bar comes in handy, the amplitude slider bar. If I want more control over the amount these verts are moving, I can slide my bar down. If I come back over here and raise some more height into them, you can see that they're moving much slower now. We can keep greater control over them for that. Uh, that's what the amplitude bar is useful for. 
The next option here we've got flatten. I'm just going to raise that slightly so it's a bit quicker. You can see there it's actually flattening this patch. It's all very self-explanatory, all used in the same way. Pressing and holding Alt and the left or right mouse button. Smooth. I'm probably going to need to add more height into that so you can see it a bit better. <laughs> right, smooth. Press and hold Alt, left mouse button. Changing the amplitude bar if we want a more aggressive smooth. You can see how that's working there noise again all of these things i think you can take your time and uh, figure out how to best use these in your own time i just wanted to give you a quick guide of how to actually use this tool the other options here allow soft selection on unselected patches that means that we can manipulate patches that aren't selected i generally keep that off uh, this is on by default keep that on we can also use this tool for blending. So I'm going to go through some of the basic steps you need to know about blending next. So we're going to talk quickly about blending and I'm just going to show you a couple of quick techniques that we can use to achieve an alpha blend. Uh, there's two ways we can do it. We can either use the advanced tool that we're just looking at or a completely different one. I'm going to show you both because we can use them in two different ways that's really going to help us. So the first thing we need to do when doing any blend is to create a new layer. And to do that, we simply need to take a copy of our original patch here and lay over a new one. And to do that, I'm simply, with our patch selected, going to press Control. I'm going to press C to copy and then V to paste. That's going to create our new layer. We can now apply a blend texture to our new layer. I'm going to use this one. And there's one thing you need to consider when doing blending is that our original patch must be textured with a non-blend texture. The reason for this is simple, that the blend textures do not have any collision data. So when we copy and lay over, if we had another blend layer underneath it, you're simply going to fall through it and you don't really want that. So ensure that your original patch is textured with a non-blend texture. So with our new layer created and our blend texture selected, we're now ready to do a basic blend. I'm going to show you the advanced patch tool, so press Y on your keyboard to bring up the tool. Uh, first things first, when we're doing a blend using this tool, we have to select Flatten and Alpha. Make sure those two options are selected. Come back over to our patches. And again, same as we did before with this tool, we press and hold Alt and then use our left mouse button. As you can see, if I'm just moving around there, it's starting to remove that blend texture to reveal the texture underneath. And that's how we create our blend. If I just deselect, you can see how that works. In actual fact, let me select a different texture just so you can see it a bit more clearly. That's better. Let me deselect again. We can see we have our mud blend going into our asphalt and that's how we do a quick blend. So again, Alt and left mouse button to remove, and we can also re-add this texture by, again, pressing holding Alt and using our right mouse button. And you can see that's re-adding the texture. Uh, again, with our amplitude bar, we can affect the aggressiveness of this blend. So if we wanted to have more control, we slide it down, and that removes the blend a lot slower. If we want it more aggressive, slide our bar up, and we can add remove and it takes away a lot quicker that's the first way in which we can do a quick blend so that's how we can use this tool to do blending and this is good for larger areas and less focused blending but i'm now going to show you another tool that we could use to do blending on either single vertices by columns or by groups and to do that get rid of this tool by pressing y and now i'm going to press g that'll bring up this tool the vertex color alpha editing tool i'm going to completely ignore the color for the time being i'm just going to focus on using it for blending and the first thing we need to do is have alpha ticked once we've got that done come back over to our patch and bring up our vertices i'm going to select this entire patch and at the moment this value bar is all the way up at the top so if i click apply you can see that's now re-added that blend texture on this entire patch if i keep it selected and just slide this bar down you can see it's slowly and gradually removing the texture on every single vertice i have selected so if i want to re-add for example i'll just select this column and I'll slide the bar back up. And as you can see, it's gradually re-adding that blend texture along that entire column. We can do it by single vertice. Whoops, I got rid of the tool. Press G to bring it back up. I could do it by single vertice. And if I just click on that, you can see it's re-added over that single vertice. And again, 
slide it back down and this is going to be extremely helpful for us as we move on and do more advanced blending it's a really focused way of doing blending uh, it's really going to help us so those are the two basic ways in which we can perform an alpha blend uh, that also brings us to the end of part two join us in part three where we'll actually begin some construction of our roads and uh, yeah i shall see you there